boys and girls, and welcome to Imaginative Narrative Writing. Last week, Miss Montiel talked to you about what is imaginative narrative writing. So let's review. What is imaginative narrative writing? Well, it tells a story, but not just any story, a fictional story, which is a make-believe story, a fantasy, or it's not real, it's not a real story. It also describes a made-up experience or event. It tells who, what, where, how, or when. Okay, so boys and girls, get ready to activate your imagination. Now, let's use your imagination to take a ride on a magic carpet with Jasmine and Aladdin. Thank you for choosing magic carpet for all your needs. Don't stand until the rug has come to a complete stop. Thank you. Goodbye now. All right, boys and girls, so go ahead and pause this video and go with Jasmine and Aladdin on a magic carpet ride. The link is attached to this assignment. When you finish going on the magic carpet ride, come back so we can continue our writing lesson. So boys and girls, I have a question for you. If you could ride on a magic carpet, what would you do? Now, first we have to brainstorm ideas. Uh, what kind of map do we use again to brainstorm ideas? Yay, we use a circle map. And in the middle of our circle map is our prompt, writing prompt again. If you could write on a magic carpet, what would you do? Some ideas that you might have thought and brainstorm might include fly around with my dragon friends. Maybe if you could fly it on the magic carpet, you would fly to the moon to play with moon dust. Or maybe you would take your magic carpet and fly to Disneyland to get on a roller coaster. Maybe you would fly over the ocean to see the whales. Maybe you'd take your magic carpet and fly to Mexico to play with your cousin. Maybe you'd want to fly over a volcano to look inside of it. Maybe you just want to fly around and play video games with the magic carpet. Maybe you want to fly to Mars to see the planet. Or you might want to fly to outer space to see all of the planets. Or maybe you could take the magic carpet and fly around Paramount to see the entire city. Remember, boys and girls, your idea doesn't have to be one of the ideas on the circle map. You can think of your own idea also. Now comes the hard part. We have to decide which idea we want to write about. Hmm, this is a hard choice, but I think Miss Cepeda is going to write about, I probably want to take the magic carpet and fly to the moon to play with moon dust. What's your idea? Now we're ready to write. Remember our Writing prompt was, if you could write on a magic carpet, what would you do? And I think Miss Cepeda's sentence is going to be, I would fly to the moon to play with moon dust. What's going to be your sentence? The writing paper is attached to the Schoology assignment. Or you could use your own paper. Remember, make a line so you have some space for drawing and writing. Um, boys and girls, we're going to use our sounds the best we can to spell out words. And we're going also going to use high-frequency words. Parents, you've been doing a great job letting the boys and girls spell the words to the best of their ability. Awesome. And now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to count the words that are in Miss Cepeda's sentence. I would fly to the moon to play with moon dust. 
That was 11 words. So when Miss Cepeda finishes her sentence, she needs to make sure there are 11 words. How many words, boys and girls, does Miss Cepeda need? 11. Good job. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the first word of my sentence. I. And that one is a high frequency word. Oh, what'd you say, boys and girls? That's right. Miss Cepeda needs to start with a capital letter because it's the first word in her sentence. I. I have to leave a finger space because I'm ready to write the next word. The next word in Miss Cepeda's sentence is would. That's not a high frequency word, so Miss Cepeda has to stretch it out slowly to listen to the sounds that she hears. So help me stretch out the word and listen to the first sound in would. W. That sounded like the window card, W. So Miss Cepeda is going to write a W. I'm not finished with the word would, so I have to say it again to see what other sounds I hear. W, uh, uh, like umbrella card. Very good. Okay, I'm going to stretch it out again to see what other sounds I hear. Would, d. That's dolphin card, the letter D. So I need the letter D. Miss Cepeda always likes to go back and read the words that she wrote already. I would fly. My next word is fly. Fly is not a high frequency word either, so we have to sound it out. I'm going to leave a finger space to get ready to write my next word, fly. When I stretch it out, fly, I can hear that the word fly starts with the letter F for fly fire. So I'm going to write a letter F. What else do I hear in the word fly? I heard uh for lemon. So I'm going to write a L. Fly. That's the long vowel I. So I'm going to write a I. And I'm going to read what I have again. I would fly Two is my next word. That's a high frequency word. Boys and girls at home, help me spell the word two. T-O, good job. I would fly to, my next word is the, and that's a high frequency word. So leave a finger space and help me spell the word the from home, boys and girls. T H. E, very good. I would fly to the moon. Uh-oh, I don't think moon's going to fit there. What should I do? Ah, I know, I should go to the next line. But I have to stretch out the word moon so I can hear the sounds that it has. Moon. I hear a at the beginning, map card for the letter M. Mm, ooh. Ah, Miss Montiel talked to you about this card called the spoon card. And I need the spelling of O-O for that sound. O-O. Mm, the last sound that I hear is mm, like in nest card. That's the letter N. Okay, now I want to go back and read what I have so far. I would fly to the moon. My next word is two. So I'm going to leave a finger space and two is a high frequency word. We already spelled it here. Easy T-O. I would fly to the moon to play. My next word is play, so I'm going to leave a finger space and we're going to stretch out the word play. P is at the beginning, like in piano cards. So Miss Cepeda is going to write a P. So let's stretch it ag again in slow motion. P. The next sound that I hear is L, like in lemon. Play. The 
last sound Miss Cepeda hears in the word play is A, like in train car. So I'm going to write an A. I would fly to the moon to play with is my next word. That's a high frequency word. Help me spell with, boys and girls. W-I-T-H. Great writers always go back and read their sentence. I would fly to the moon to play with moon. Hey, you already helped me spell that word before, so I'm going to take a look at it here and go ahead and spell it. Mmm, ooh, mmm, moon. I would fly to the moon to play with moon dust. Hmm, that's not a high frequency word, so I have to sound it out. What's the first sound that I hear? D, dust. I hear a D like in dolphin. So don't forget, finger space. I write a D. Now what's the next sound? D, uh, uh, like umbrella. So I'm going to write the letter U. D, uh, I hear S like sun. So I'm going to write a letter S. D. Uh, the last sound that I hear, t, like in turtle, so I'm going to write a T. Now, let me go back and read the words that I wrote in my sentence. I would fly to the moon to play with moon dust. Now that I finished writing my sentence, I'm going to put a period. And last, I'm going to count my words to make sure there were how many boys and girls? Mm-hmm, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now, Miss Cepeda is ready to check her sentence. Now that you have finished writing your sentence, we have to check your sentence. Does your sentence have a capital at the beginning? Did you leave finger spaces between the words? Does it have a period at the end? Did you use your sounds to spell the words the best that you can? And last, reread your sentence to make sure that it makes sense. Great, now that you finished writing your sentence, you're ready to draw a picture. Now that you finished drawing your picture, let's check your picture. Does your picture match your sentence? Do you have a character in your drawing? Does your character have all its parts? And very important, did you include a setting in your drawing to let us know where your character is at? Did you use realistic colors when coloring your characters in your setting? And do you have at least five details in your picture? Fantastic, boys and girls. Now, I'm going to leave you with a quote from Walt Disney. If you can dream it, you can do it, boys and girls. Great job for today's writing prompt, boys and girls.